All right, so I have a pretty cool knife in front of me here. Uh, this is from the Rough Rider Reserve uh, series, which is a higher end uh, Rough Rider knife that Smoky Mountain Knife Works came out a few years ago with. Um, better produced, better made, uh, more expensive, of course, but using better materials. Um, and they've released, you know, some pretty cool knives. Uh, this one might be one of the cooler ones, in my opinion. Um, and this one, I think, is called the Ghost Fish, I believe is what it's called. Um, and it is, you know, a sunfish pattern or elephant toenail pattern. Uh, of course, with all these Rough Rider Reserve knives, you get this uh, metal tube here. Um, because they're trying to compete with some higher-end companies uh, that use more premium packaging. Uh, that being said, this knife, I think, could be considered a more uh, premium pocket knife. Um, it's, like I said, it is a sunfish or elephant toenail type uh, pattern. It's got this really uh, well-shaped blade, in my opinion. It's very, there's something about it that looks very shark or fish-like, which is kind of cool. Um, it does have a half-stop. And you can see here it's got an easy open knot to make it easier to pinch open. The uh, action isn't the greatest. It snaps closed ridiculously. But the snap open isn't super strong. Uh, when I first got it, it was worse, but I put some mineral oil in it and I've been working it a little bit. And it's gotten better, so the action may get even better as I uh, use it, open it, and close it a bunch. It may... Uh, break in and get even better than it is currently. Right now, it's kind of okay. Um, the closing action is ridiculous. But the opening action could certainly be better. Um, but the blade does, you know, come back up. So not the end of the world or anything. Uh, just a little bit, a um, little bit weaker than you would ideally want it to be. Uh, but this is, I think, a $57 knife. So, you know, not super uh, nitpicky there. Um, to look at the handle covers here, or handles, these are supposed to be like a white micarta. They feel more plasticky than micarta-y, but that's kind of a running thing with these Rough Rider Reserve knives and Rough Rider knives in general. Uh, you can see that there is some layers there. It's almost more like a... You know, it is a micarta because there's layers. Um, it's just not a very, like, grippy or um, not a micarta that has a lot of texture to it. It's just very smooth. Kind of feels almost more like a synthetic, um, although hopefully it won't crack like a synthetic will over time. Uh, I believe the bolsters on these Rough Rider Reserve knives are stainless steel, um, or maybe they're just a brushed nickel silver. The shield has got to be nickel silver. It's very shiny. It seems like the pins are nickel silver too. Maybe. Um, there is a slight gap around this pin here, it looks like, right here. Um, so that's a slight thin finish thing. Uh, blade's not perfectly centered, but traditional pocket knife that's pinned together. I don't expect it to be um, perfectly centered all the time. Now, one of the more interesting things about this knife that I find interesting is, number one, this thing's got two back springs for the one blade. Now, I don't know if that's just because the factory that's producing these can't make a back spring that's this thick, or what the idea is, but that's very clearly two separate back springs. And the other interesting thing is the shape of the back spring and the part of the blade that meet, meets up with it. It's very interesting. I don't know why they decided to do this, but that could be part of the reasoning why it doesn't feel super snappy. I don't know, though. It's just very interesting. I've never seen a backspring and tang design like that. Um, so that's new for me. I'm not sure why they did that, um, but it is very interesting. Um, there's no blade play when the blade's open. Um, and these Rough Rider Reserve knives are all 
in D2 steel, and they're all made in China. If you don't like Chinese-made knives, don't buy it. You don't have to buy it. Um, uh, typically, I do prefer American-made knives, but, you know, there are a lot of good uh, products coming out of China. And, you know, these Rough Rider Reserve knives are one of those things, along with the Rosecraft blade knives. They also seem really good. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this knife. I'm glad I decided to go ahead and get one. Um, there are a couple models now in the Rough Rider Reserve series that have jig bow. Uh, one of them is like a pruner type knife. I don't remember what the other one was, but I wasn't really interested in them. Now I'm hoping that at some point they'll bring out uh, jig bone handles for the knife knife uh, patterns that I really like. Like maybe they'll do like a Rough Rider Reserve Barlow with the jig bone. I would have loved for this to have a jigged bone handle on it. That would have been really cool. Uh, but the only cool, the cool thing about this uh, smooth white micarta is I may try to do some like scrimshaw on the back of this because those of you that kind of know the history of uh, the elephant toenail or sunfish knife is one of the uses for it was like cutting rope. Like you put it down on your rope and you hit it with like a mallet or something to cut rope. Um, and, you know, I've imagined a lot of these were used on like ships and stuff. And back in the day when you would be on a ship for, you know, months at a time, sailors would often preoccupy themselves with scrimshaw, which is why um, you'll sometimes see some like uh, whale, whale teeth, with uh, scrimshaw in them and stuff because sailors would get really bored and that's just what they would do. So it would be kind of cool to do some scrimshaw on this. I don't know what kind of scrimshaw I would want to do, um, but it might be cool to try on this uh, micardo here on this side. Um, shield is like a bomb shield, I guess, or you know something similar to that. Maybe like a combination between like a corset-shaped shield and a bomb shield, almost. Uh, it's just glued in. None of these are pinned or anything. Uh, it's got brass liners. I think these run on washers, maybe. I don't remember, but I think they do. I think there's like washers in there. It's hard to tell, but there's like gaps in between the blade. Okay, I'm not going to get it to focus on that. There's gaps in between the blade and the liners, which lead me to believe that it's running on washers. Um, so that's kind of cool. You know, a little bit more of a modern touch there on a uh, essentially traditional pocket knife. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool one. I'm excited to, to get one. Um, hopefully, uh, if you guys get them, maybe your uh, opening action will be a little bit better. Uh, let me know if you guys have one, how you're opening action is. Uh, mine's not horrible, which is not great. Um, the other kind of cool thing about these is with like a lot of these uh, more like, you know, modern traditionals is this has a stop pin down in there. Now I'm not sure how easy that's going to be to see. Let me just wash it up. Oh, you can see it right there. Down in there's a stop pin, which will catch on the the uh, Blade Ricasso, I believe that's called. This part right here. Uh, it'll catch on that instead of the tang. Instead of this part, the kick, not the tang, the kick. Instead of the kick resting on the back spring like uh, most traditional pocket knives, um, it gets stopped by the catch pin. So you won't ever have um, a blade wrap. But like a traditional pocket knife, like this case peanut here, this kick rests on the back spring, and that's what stops the blade. And then when you push down on the blade, you can see the back spring will come up a little bit because the but the um, blade kick is resting right on the back spring. Whereas with this knife, when you close it, when you close it here. The blade won't go anywhere because it's sitting on a pin. Well, actually, it does move a little bit. That's interesting. So maybe part of the kick is hitting the... It's a very little bit, though. 
So the stop pin stops it, but I think that the kick is hitting the back spring just a little bit. At least that's what it seems like. Um, so that's interesting. But there's a stop pin in there to stop it from getting blade wrap. The knife came pretty sharp. Let me see here. Yeah, knife came shaving sharp. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, overall, really cool design. I like it. like the way it looks. I do kind of wish they'd make one with some jig bone uh, handle covers because I would really like that. Uh, not the best fit and finish I've ever gotten, but it's also, you know, pretty, seems pretty well made in the ways that it needs to be. You know, there's a slight, like, gap around this pin here. And I think, yeah, right here, there's like a little imperfection there in the micarta where the micarta meets the liner. Now, I don't know if they just filled that with the glue and that's why that looks like that or what but there's a minor little imperfection there. But other than, you know, those couple little nitpicky things, this like $57 knife is really quite good, I think. Um, and I really like the way it looks. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna try to carry this quite a bit, uh, so I'll see how I like it over time, I guess. But for right now, I think it's a pretty cool knife. And for like $57, I think it's a pretty good deal. Uh, but that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I hope you have a good day.